All right, welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is gonna to be a review of the Rigid Portable Vac Shop Vac Style Vacuum Cleaner that's particularly valuable in the detailing business. So without any further delay, let's hop right into it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit subscribe, turn on the bell so that you won't miss another cool video like this. All right, so let's jump right into it. The Rigid Portable Vac is small in size, we like that, that fits in our detailing van, truck, mobile detailing business, or it tucks away nicely in our garage. So small is a good thing, but with small, we want performance. The Rigid Portable Vac delivers that performance. That's five peak horsepower. That rivals the much larger machines that take up way bigger footprint in our van or in our shop. So five peak horsepower is plenty to get the dirt up and get that sand out of the carpet or anything else we're trying to do. It also has a four gallon capacity, meaning that if we were to suck uh, water out of, the, out of a bucket or out of any situation, it would fill up to about four gallons. And with that being said, this is a wet dry vac, although I do not use it as one. Uh, I use a carpet extractor, which I have another video. I'll put a link up here so you guys can check that out if you want. So it does hold four gallons which in terms of detailing capacity, you could do five, six vehicles and it's not even gonna fill this up, not even halfway. The idea is when we're detailing, we're picking most of the trash up and throwing it in the trash. We're only sucking dirt, sand, small particulate. That's a ton of it. Plus I find that if the larger the capacity, the longer between cleaning. And what that equals is the filter getting clogged up, messy dirt staying in there. So I kind of like to dump this out and get that filter cleaned out after every single uh, day of use. All right, so another good feature with it, it has caster wheels. These are particularly valuable because as we're dragging it around the car, it's actually driving around on these wheels, which is great. We've all been in that situation where we pull the vacuum hose, the vacuum cleaner falls over, now we're dragging it around on the side. That's a no, 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 that's a mess. So that's a good thing. It also has a 20 foot cord. This 20 foot cord is more than enough to plug in in any nearby socket and make it out to the driveway or all around your workshop. Or again, if you're in a mobile detailing, pretty far away from your truck or van, 20 feet, that's a good margin. All right, so let's get into the hoses and attachments that came with the machine. So right off the bat, this hose is about seven feet. And I'll tell you what, the quality is pretty lame. It is pretty weak. And I'll tell you why. Smash is really easy. And it also kinks even easier. Now, if we're going around a corner, boom, it kinks, there goes the suction. That's no good. So one of the first things I did was replace all this. And I'll get into that in a minute. There's an affordable solution waiting right there. So some other things that came with it, a small, um, telescoping wand so that you can do the whole shop floor or stuff like that. Even though I don't use it, this probably could be handy to do a small workshop or something with. This bristle, bristle brush, probably good for getting shelves. You can tell it's brand new. I've never used it. And it does have a crevice tool, although I find this to be very shallow. It's got a weird bent angle that doesn't work good for me. So right off the bat, I moved on to something better. And that something better is the rigid auto detailing kit. So in comparison, this is about a 10 foot hose and you can see around the corner, nothing, no kinking, smashing. I'm squeezing it. I mean, if I squeeze it as hard as I possibly can, I'll get it to smash. But um, all in all, pretty kink resistant, pretty smash resistant and very flexible too, which is nice. It also comes with a host of uh, cleaning tools like this crevice tool, much longer, skinnier, more isolated tip that draws the most amount of suction out of the smallest area, which is nice. We can shove this down in the seats and get around those seat tracks and all those hard to reach areas. A larger car wash style attachment for getting the middle of those rugs all in one pop, getting nice action out of it. It comes with these two brushes as well. A coarse bristle brush to agitate the carpet. Let's say if you had some sand or something like that in there. And also this light bristle brush, probably a little better for not scratching items, like if it was a plastic area. But uh, I don't use these too much. I got a better idea with that. And when I do my next video that's coming up shortly, 
it'll be the interior vacuuming and cleaning of the car. And I'm gonna go into full depth on how I actually use these products. But for today, we'll just stick to reviewing it. It also came with a couple of um, adapters to fit different machines because although it is a rigid and it does mate perfectly with this machine, it also could be used on an, another machine as well. All right, one thing I did want to point out with this crevice tool, and keep in mind, I've been using this machine for about a year now. Still looks great. Still looks brand new, actually. The crevice tool, on the other hand, took a little bit of a beating. It's rubber. It's made to articulate some and bend, which is kind of useful, but it ended up snapping right there. Look at that. Now all the air just pours into here. This is actually no more good. So I'm going to throw this out. And I got another one on the way. And you'll see that in my future video also. All right, so that about wraps it up with the different attachments and tools. Let's talk about how we do maintenance this uh, system after we've been using it for a while. And again, I recommend daily cleaning of the filter and the inside housing here. So easy, one clip, two clips, top comes off, and there's your filter. So to remove the filter, press in the center, filter comes right off. I recommend holding by one of these tabs, putting it inside of a garbage can and smashing it to get most of this. You got to be careful when you're doing that though. You're going to get some particulate. I recommend a mask or something like that. If you wanted to be more gentle about it, you could hold it in a trash can and just use a brush to clean it off. But the idea is once this gets clogged up, the suction goes way down and that's with any vacuum, not this one. And these filter cartridges can be 10 or $15. So every time they get dirty, we don't want to just throw it away and get another one. We try to maintenance it the best we can and we use our best judgment with cleaning it. And when it looks like it's had enough, we throw it away. So another reason why I don't use this as a wet vac is because in order to use it as a wet vac, you have to open it up, take the filter out, put it back together. It's going to get totally soaked in here and then it's got to fully dry out. And then to use it as a dry vac again, we'd have to put the filter back. So that's just not what I want this machine for. So to put the filter back on, same as we took it off and press it down. Once it's attached, it's there. Close the compartment, latch the two sides, and there you go. It's as easy as that. That's a filter clean. Dump out the container once it's open. Probably a five minute job worth doing once a day to keep things tidy around the shop. All right, so enough talking about the machine and looking at it and playing with it. Let's get outside with that super dirty truck I got and get that crap out of that carpet so that we can really see how this thing performs. Cause that's the bottom line. We wanted performance versus value. And I'll tell you what, you're gonna see this thing's gonna kick some butt. So let's go do it, yeah. All right, here's a look at our victim, the dirty dirt bike truck. Man, this is filthy. There's debris everywhere. This is truly gonna put that rigid to the test. Let's see what it's got. I'm just gonna apply very little pressure and just let the suction of the vacuum do all the work. It seems to be picking things up pretty easy. And you know, the noise level's not so bad either. So overall, I would say it's doing a very good job on this carpet. So even after all the dirt's pulled out of this carpet, there are some stains. I'm going to have to come back with my extractor and really get this cleaned up nice. Alright, so I picked up the small particles very well. I threw some large particles on this floor just to see what it would do. And I have to say, Picking up large items went even easier. Here's a tip that I picked up from Wilson's Auto Detailing. Make sure that the end of your crevasse tool is nice and smooth, no jagged edges. If it is jagged, run a file over it, knock all those burrs off, and then run some sandpaper and really get that smooth. A rough edge on a crevice tool can really do damage on delicate areas of the car. So I, I make a daily inspection on my equipment, and should I see something like this, I take care of it right away. And there it is, super smooth, just like we want it. All right, that's the rigid portable vac. Did it live up to its expectations? I think it did. Why don't you leave a comment down below? Tell me, do you think that it cleaned up the carpet well? Do you have a vacuum that rivals this vacuum in this category? Or do you have the same vacuum and want to share a story? We like to hear it all. I'll answer any questions you have about this or anything else for that matter. So 
If you like these videos, please hit subscribe, turn on the bell so you'll be around for the next show. And we appreciate you stopping by. See you on the next one. Yeah.